Yeah, good morning everyone. My name is Ed. Uh, I see a lot of familiar faces here also from yesterday night. Um, <clears throat> maybe we stay a little bit in data relativity uh, before I continue with my presentation. Um, I was curious, how many of you are actually holding uh, Melon? Can you? Hands up. Okay, that's like 50%. And uh, the next question is maybe what more difficult because um, how many of you would agree with me that in this massively overvaluated space, this token is massively undervaluated? Hands up. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <coughs> Um, so Energy Web Foundation, um, Energy Web Foundation uh, resulted out of um, a lot of research which we did um, since, a, since a few years, since the theorem actually started. And um, it's an approach uh, from a couple of startups in the, in, the, in the blockchain space to scale the technology and um, to enable the vertical integration in the energy market. So why does it make sense in the energy market? Now this has nothing to do with, uh, with blockchain itself. Energy market itself is uh, enormously changing right now and it's, it started in, uh, since, since in the last 15 years. Uh, this is, <coughs> the roots in the energy market are very, come, come from massively centralized um, uh, uh, installations to now massively decentralized installation that's happening very fast. Um, the cost of maintaining large uh, central infrastructure is becoming very, uh, very high and it's actually becoming more and more profitable with time now with the push of renewables um, to have smaller installations. Um, there has been done a lot of research on this and um, um, it's, it's, it's undeniable specifically with more and more renewables coming to the market. So the whole value chain is actually shifting behind the meter. And if you look at the, um, the, the easiest, um, how to say, uh, indicator of this is just look at the profit of the largest utilities around the globe. So 16 of the largest utilities in, um, in Europe seven years ago made a profit of roughly 16 billion. And uh, in the last year it was minus 4 billion. And that mainly uh, happens because also prices are going down. So the marginal costs in generating electricity are going against zero. And um, a lot of other factors. One of the main factors is what is happening is uh, this is the legacy infrastructure, how we knew it before, and now uh, where it's going is that this is about to happen in the future. Now this is very difficult in the energy market. Energy market basically you have kind of two business models. On the one side you have the free market where you uh, the, the business model of produce cheap, sell high is prevailing. On the other side you need to take care of the frequency and frequency um, is of national interest and therefore this market is highly regulated. Now usually what countries do um, is um, you can, in, in, in average you can put countries into four fields and um, of unbundling stages. So there is a lot of countries, development countries, where the whole energy field is uh, centralized and it's, 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 it's run by the government. And um, unbundling simply means um, privatizing specific aspects of this. And as the unbundling happens, and one of the most advanced markets is actually Chile, it's one of the most privatized markets, as uh, those two business models are being separated from each other. And so usually there is one entity taking care of, um, of the uh, frequency, and this entity is then is, is, is highly regulated, and this, this entity sets the rules for all the other people how to participate in the market. Um, and actually this has to happen in real time that um, the transactions behind, uh, behind um, let's say, at the end points can, can happen uh, um, in real time, but actually the opposite is happening. Right now in the energy market, um, these two business models, let's say the regulated space and the non-regulated space, are still communicating on Excel files. And for example, in Germany, there is um, 8,000 balancing groups and they're sending 8,000 Excel files to the uh, transmission system operators which are balancing the network. And these guys, uh, it takes them two months to send out the invoice for the balancing and so forth. So there is a massive barrier that this market actually can go further and into decentralization. And this needs co a completely new approach on the technology side. And that's why actually the blockchain development um, and the, the, the new possibilities, the new degrees of freedom we have here are a perfect match for the energy market. 
So um, we initiated the Energy Web Foundation together with um, uh, Rocky Mountain Institute, a very famous think tank in the US, uh, uh, roughly three quarters of a year ago. We investigated all kind of um, use cases that were out there. Um, when we started, like two years ago, there was maybe three, four startups. Right now, there is already over 350 startups um, active in this field. There have been uh, identified more than 200 use cases um, that are real game changers in this space. And um, I just want to give you one simple use case. I think this is one of the most, uh, let's say, one of the lowest hanging fruit out there, and which is certificate of origin. I'm not going to explain you how this works in US just want to flip the picture left and right. This is including blockchain, this is without blockchain. I think the picture says enough. Um, now, what is the problem uh, that we have deploying blockchain in this field? It's, um, it's, it's, it's scalability, we have a lot of data, um, privacy. So um, we have developed a method, uh, um, um, let's say a structure we have, which we have been thinking a lot about, um, how can we use Ethereum or how can we adapt Ethereum that this, uh, this you know, that it, it's suitable to be regulated but still open and allows innovation. And um, the simple structure we came up with, and, and this, um, the f one of the first test networks was actually Kovan on Ethereum. Uh, we said, I mean, the biggest problem here um, in, in, the, in this network is it's very, if you want to regulate something, you, you must know who you can call. And that's why on the consensus mechanism, we have chosen the proof of authority. So the network, which just went live um, in the alpha stage, um, we have um, um, a lot of validators, all the uh, utilities which have joined so far the, uh, the network, they are known. So we have a set of validators, but it's a public network. A public yeah. network. And, and many a lot of media is confusing private or public network. Here, it's the distinction here, it's a, it's a permission validator permission public validator network. Public Simply that you know if something happens, there, you know who to call. So um, at the Energy Web Foundation, so the startups which are working for us on, on scaling this technology and deploying it in the energy market is Parity, BrainBot and Slocket. And after hearing your presentation, I'd be very happy if we could uh, discuss about the oracles. And um, so what we're looking at is uh, we, we want to open, I mean, in, in our opinion, the, the blockchain, the core infrastructure enabling transactions at the endpoints and the connection to the hardware devices, this should be open source and it should be owned by anyone. And that's why actually all the utilities are, are becoming validators which are joining the, um, the Energy Web Foundations. By now we have also a couple of startups uh, joined and, and, and um, other entities. And, uh, but here, you know, this actually device interface, this is something enormously difficult in the energy sector. And because energy sector is a very proprietary sector, we have over 300 protocols in communication out there. And um, I think this task is, is as huge as this task actually, to bring something scalable in there. And um, so what we do is we, uh, we open source communication protocols and we reverse engineer a couple of them, simply because this is one of the biggest entry barriers. So the goal finally is to tear down all the entry barriers into the energy market that real innovation can start to happen. And now uh, maybe one of the reasons I, this, I don't know, it, it's not invented by me, but this is the, I think this is the biggest kind of advantage in using the blockchain. So um, we are, in one of the task forces, we're trying to de deploy the certificate of origin, so we're actually connecting power plants um, to the chain. And now the interesting thing is, usually coming from this space, you put all the logic into one application, but in, in, in our space, we're connecting a power plant and we're making all the data available to be used, um, um, how to say, we actually, we, we outsourcing all the repetitive stuff into the core layer, and all the interesting stuff is um, that once Polkadot is functioning and we can actually, <laughs> um, how to say, connect different, um, different platforms to each other, then uh, Mellonport, uh, which is working on funds, can actually uh, take data from the Energy Web Foundation 
and actually build something like green bonds and see what's actually happening with the power plants. Yeah. We were joking yesterday. Um, I was saying I have a three-year-old daughter, and I think by when she gets 20, she will be laughing at me when I tell her that at my time, uh, there were still assets uh, you could invest in which are not liquid. So uh, I, I believe in 15 years, everything will become liquid. And I think that's, that's, that's something that, that Mellon Port will also uh, enable. So the network that we're building is uh, all the validators uh, they, they have, which have joined um, the Energy Web Foundation. What they actually do is um, they agree upon different standards. So there's a lot of business models which are valid around the globe, like certificates of origin and so forth. The, the, the network is uh, accessible for anyone. And of course, it's, it's, it's essentially a theorem with another, with another consensus algorithm, which uh, already brings us a much higher scalability. But the interesting thing is, is that these validators, they agree upon a specific smart contract. And this, by agreeing upon this, whitelisting this, uh, they setting a standard. And they, so for example, certificate of origin is actually a 40 line code, uh, 40 line code smart contract, which simply says, if this signal has aggregated a specific threshold, make a token that destroys itself after one year existence. The next you do is you whitelist identities, power plants, which are um, uh, eligible um, to use the smart contract. Now the interesting thing is, um, we just pushed out a feature, uh, secret smart contract, which uh, will enable an interaction that hasn't been out there um, in the world yet. And it's a very interesting um, feature. Um, authorities or validators can agree upon a standard, and then the standard, the smart contract, is publicly accessible for anyone. But if a couple of parties then agree to use this standard, and um, there is a price finding mechanism in this uh, smart contract, then this can be kept secret only to the people which are using the smart contract. I call this interaction compliant secrecy. I don't think there has been an interaction like this on the world before, where guys are making a deal in the clo behind closed doors and you know that they're doing right because they can't do it wrong. It's like compliance up front. And this is a key feature in energy sector, that you can actually, uh, you can, you can, um, enable compliancy, meaning you can enable keeping the frequency stable, but you don't have to make public at what, at, at what prices. Yeah. So this is, I mean, by now, I mean, the, um, so on the timeline, we're looking at maybe one and a half years until we go live, because there is a lot of things on the governance side we have to um, we have to um, figure out of this of this chain and but and there is a lot of features we're working on. So this is the, if these features are out all, all out, I, I call this the, the then we have the world completely changed. But uh, you know this is just where we started. So it, there is a lot of interesting features to come out, and we're releasing code on on a, a six week cycle. So um, on 1st of November, this chain goes live. I mean, publicly accessible to anyone to just uh, watch out on GitHub. The utilities and uh, parties which have joined us so far are these, but there is over 150 more utilities in the pipeline which um, are interested to join this field. And there is a huge ecosystem in development. And uh, we're actually talking to a lot of the startups and asking them, hey guys, what are your requirements on them? Uh, what do you, what, what do we need for your apps uh, to function? Come to us. We are happy to build it because it's it's we want to we want this whole thing to become a, a common good. And um, <clears throat> on the timeline, we just made the release, um, deployed the network, so it's literally utilities running nodes and a couple of startups validators. And um, so we have a yearly event called Event Horizon. The next one is um, in Berlin on 17 um, till 19 of April. And we expect roughly 500 startups in this space to come over there. I'd like to invite you all to join us. And we plan to go live um, at Event Horizon 2019. Um, so yeah, that's the event. Um, um, on the last thing, um, uh, as, as a last note, I would say, Oh, that's that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
the topic of this presentation was actually, you know, how can we, you know, how can we use, how, uh, how can we use different chains for a specific purpose? And one of the first business models I remember when we started to investigating how this technology potentially might be applied in the energy sector uh, was green bonds. And um, I remember at that time we worked through everything, you know, how can we uh, structure the green bond, how we connect, can connect the asset uh, to have something like a real-time asset valuation and so forth. And then we figured out, oh my God, that was kind of uh, three years ago, Ethereum was still in the building. And uh, we figured out we probably need like 20 million to realize this because there are so many steps we have to do. And now, uh, now we have come up, uh, you know, it's like, okay, there is one startup doing funds, there is another startup doing uh, real-time asset valuation, there is another startup doing, um, um, doing the, the core infrastructure. And uh, that's the beauty of this space, you know, because we outsource so much repetitive stuff into the core blockchain, actually, I believe it is the ecosystem that will um, uh, enable a real innovation here and not only one company. Yeah. And that's yeah, what I would like to emphasize. Let's talk to each other. I, I think there is very little um, uh, competition, actually. I think we only can be successful together. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree, and obviously that's one of the, the core purposes around M0, so um, I hope we're all 